Hello everyone. So welcome back to our latest lecture session. So we were discussing I believe precipitation and dissolution and in the first session or relevant uh, session we looked at the applications initially and then I believe we mo moved on to looking at uh, I guess uh, why kinetics play an important role in this particular aspect of precipitation right. And then we moved on to uh, looking at the four uh, major aspects or stages pardon me uh, that are involved with uh, precipitation. And again there are there is a particular reason why we are going through each stage because later on let us say when you want to either promote uh, uh, precipitation or let us say you know hinder precipitation you need to tinker with uh, some of these stages right. So again that is the reason we are going through these stages and the stages I believe we looked at were uh, nucleation and what is it now the next step obviously would be crystal growth and then agglomeration more or less accumulation right or coming together and then ripening I guess. So, we are done with uh, or you know we started discussing about uh, nucleation. So, nucleation and uh, nucleation I guess you have the solid being uh, uh, what do we say formed and more or less that at the uh, nano scale. So, I guess the smallest particle that you can call to be a uh, solid and I think we the term we are using in this context is nuclei right. So, the nuclei are formed obviously right I mean this is terminology again. Uh, they are uh, more or less uh, nano scale right and then uh, what is the aspect that we need to consider here I guess right. So, is just saturation good enough, saturation good enough for your nucleation to go through? No uh, again why is that I think that is because uh, the rate of your nucleation is equal to k times s minus 1 to the power of m right. So, just say if s is uh, 2 or so right uh, you know even though it is saturated uh, you see the rates are going to be relatively uh, less right or not good enough for your particular nucleation to go through now. Again nucleation as in we are considering that there are no other solid phases uh, present in the uh, solution or suspended in the uh, solution right. So, here it is from scratch and so obviously for that what do you need? You need uh, super saturated solutions when S is greater than or e around 100 or 1000 or so right and again I think we talked about the order of m I think 3 to 8 or 3 to 9 I guess right. So, you know as you see you know once you uh, have the uh, supercritical uh, saturation as an s uh, in the order of around uh, you know s is in the region of about 100 or 1000 right say then you are going to have more or less uh, what we say rapid nucleation uh, uh, going through right again that is because m is relatively high. So, I believe we have a relevant figure here. So, here we have rate of nucleation right and here is uh, what do we say degree of saturation C is the concentration of the relevant ions uh, in solution and C s is the saturated concentration of those particular uh, ions let us say. So, S here we are saying is the degree of saturation right uh, and also keep in mind we looked at saturation ratio 2 earlier right. I think that was equal to uh, Q by K s O right to the power of uh, 1 by x right. Again uh, degree of saturation here. So, obviously uh, when it is less than 1 what does it mean now C is less than C s right. The current concentration of the relevant uh, ions is less than their saturated values right uh, you know uh, uh, so this is going to be under saturation yes because obviously if the uh, solution is under saturated uh, there is going to be no nucleation uh, as such that is going to go through. So, that is what you see here you know in this region you see that there is no nucleation here. So, this particular dotted line is just to uh, for our particular understanding of where the uh, s equal to 1 lies right. So, you see that even when s is greater than 1 in this region where we say it is over saturated right s is greater than 1 or c is greater than c s right when s is greater than 1 c is greater than c s, but you still see that you know the solution uh, uh, does not favor or promote nucleation you know again this is from particular graph I guess right still you see no nucleation here, but only when you are within the supercritical saturation zones. Or when you reach the supercritical right as critical let us say right and you see a rapid increase more or less like a switch turning on or off that is what we uh, you know were trying to understand. Why is that again because the order right order r equal to k s minus 1 to the power of m the order is relatively high. So, once the conditions are favorable you know it takes off it as in nucleation takes off right. So, that is something that we uh, looked at yes. 
So, obviously, the next step would be uh, what do you say now you have just these uh, what do you say independent uh, what do you say nanoscale uh, solid particles the smallest particle uh, that we could call a uh, what do you say now a solid right. So, next step obviously is the crystal growth right and let us look at that right. So, crystal growth I guess yes. So, here let us say there are aspects involved. So, obviously, first let us look at what is the rate of this particular crystal growth r equal to k times a is the concentration of your surface area let us say uh, right into s minus 1 to the power of n. n is usually 1 and sometimes also equal to uh, 2 right. So, here uh, you know uh, let us understand you know which aspects play an important role here right. So, earlier uh, if you remember that you know uh, s you know with respect to nucleation what was the equation r equal to k times s minus 1 to the power of m, m is around uh, let us say 3 to 8 right. This is for nucleation. So, here s plays an important role right and why is that because the order of the relevant set of variables is relatively high, but here the order is only either 1 or 2 right. So, actually what plays a much more important role is the size of your particular uh, particles here, here A is the uh, surface area concentration here right, A is the surface area concentration here and that is why as you see here again the uh, saturation ratio does have an effect, but here we have an important uh, new variable that is the uh, surface area concentration here right. So, the greater the area available for your of your particular solid right. The, that would mean the greater the rate of your crystal growth right. So, if you want to promote precipitation at this stage what can you do? You can either add a lot of your particular uh, what is it now uh, compound or the solid to increase yes, but the effect will be uh, relatively less because the order is 1 or 2 right or you know obviously, you can also try to add smaller size particles right which will have a greater uh, surface area yes or obviously, even adding more solids will have a net effect or you know have a net increase in the surface area. So, it is better off that you try to what do we say tinker with A rather than S, but more or less and depending on uh, the relevant side of the particles they obviously are interrelated right. Again, so if you want to promote uh, crystal growth uh, you know uh, the surface area concentration right is an important aspect here right. So, again that is one aspect that we need to consider. So, let us move on to the next aspect I guess. And then we hear uh, the next stage in your particular precipitation after nucleation and then crystal growth is now going to be agglomeration as in you know accumulation or you know the solids coming together now right. So, here what is it that means now how what is it uh, how is it going to affect uh, your particular precipitation. So, keep in mind that the relevant equation is still the same you know what is it now r equal to r equal to k a s minus 1 to the power of m right. And now, let us say as the size of the particles keeps increasing right, A keeps decreasing right, the surface area concentration keeps decreasing now. So, in effect what does agglomeration or the stage of agglomeration lead to? It leads to a decrease in the relevant rates right, because the size of the particles increases and as you see as size increases right, the surface area concentration uh, decreases in your particular uh, solution yes. So, obviously, that is one particular uh, effect uh, of agglomeration yes. So, let us move on to the last stage. So, it is ripening I guess you know uh, you do have the uh, natural calorie of a fruit uh, turning ripe right. So, in the same case I guess that is what that is how I try, uh, tend to understand this particular uh, stage anyway. So, ripening here uh, it more or less means you have formation of and this keep in mind is the last stage right and if you remember I think the example for Al 3 plus or something like that right it falls down the ladder different solids. So, the last uh, stage would be the most insoluble form of your uh, solid right. So, we know that you know this is how uh, the precipitation or the kind of uh, solid changes. So, the last form let us say this is solid form 1 which will be relatively soluble right relatively soluble and solid 2 let us say which is uh, relatively insoluble and then solid 3 I mean assuming that there are 3 solid phases that uh, Al 3 plus can precipitate in the form of right. So, here solid 1 is most soluble 
and that is why it is going to be formed first then solid 2 which is relatively insoluble and then solid 3 uh, which is the most insoluble of the 3 uh, solids right. So, again keep in mind that this is the order in general obviously that uh, it uh, proceeds right. So, your most soluble solid obviously will be formed first right. So, that is what it means here the most soluble solid would form first right. Again so, here what is it now we have the uh, formation of uh, relatively insoluble relatively insoluble uh, what do we say solid species I guess or solids right formation of relatively insoluble uh, solids right or transformation of the relevant uh, solid into more insoluble forms that might be a better understanding guys. So, transformation of the solids into relatively more insoluble forms right. So, uh, that is what we have here there are two uh, cases here I think one is the Oswald ripening. right as an uh, your solid becomes more insoluble more or less due to the increasing uh, area or surface area or increase in the particle size you know. So, the effect of particle size here that is more or less one particular case right. Uh, we are going to look at the other case too, uh, but before we move, move on we have relevant equation here. So, here we have the solubility constant of let us say the smaller particle you know K S O right. Let us just try to uh, we have a relevant equation here let us just try to understand this particular uh, system here. So, log K S O right and what is K S O obviously uh, the solubility constant uh, which I sometimes call the solubility product of the relevant smaller particles. K S O at infinity time at infinity means it is for large particles right. So, that what it means K S O at infinity is the equilibrium constant for the larger particles right S is the molar surface area area per mole right. Again we have a new term here it is this is not the saturation ratio keep that in mind please you know we have these are relevant uh, variables. So, molar surface area or area per mole right. So, obviously that depends on the particle size right. So, the lesser the uh, particle size the greater the S right and that is what we need to understand here. So, obviously here what can I understand here right what are the effect of S on K S 4 now. So, the smaller the particle size right uh, this uh, greater the value of S right the area per mole the smaller the particle size the greater the area available of the solid per mole right. So, here obviously uh, the smaller the particle the greater the S that more or less translates to a higher value of K S O right. So, the smaller the particle size the greater the value of this area per mole or molar surface area right molar surface area right. So, that more or less means a higher value of uh, K S O right and what does a higher value of K S O more or less translate into now. So, obviously K S O let us say you know uh, let us say for one particular example A L O is thrice uh, solid in equilibrium with A L 3 plus and 3 O H minus right. So, obviously K S O for this particular uh, case what is that now activity of A L 3 plus times activity of O H minus to the power of 3 by uh, activity of A L O H thrice solid, but as we know activity of a pure solid is 1. So, that is why we are not going to have that here. So, obviously here uh, let us just understand what we are up to. So, the smaller the size of the particle the greater the value of K S O. So, if K S O is higher right what does that mean the greater the concentration of the relevant uh, what do we say uh, cations or anions right or in this case the metal uh, Al 3 plus. So, again what does that mean uh, the smaller uh, size particles are relatively more soluble right. So, that is our uh, particular understanding from here I think we have a decent aspect here or graphic here uh, small particles larger S right that means higher K S O which as we looked at in this particular example means it is more soluble right. Again a uh, small statistic as in when the surface uh, area effect or you know uh, the concentration becomes separate it is becomes separate it seems around 10 micrometers right. So, that is uh, one particular aspect that uh, you know you can keep in mind I guess. Uh, so, let us move on ok let us just summarize I guess before moving on to the other aspects. So, we looked at nucleation right 
and we saw that this greatly depends on what is this now this is the saturation ratio saturation ratio s here that is different from the s here in this particular equation and then we looked at uh, what is it please crystal growth right crystal growth. So, that depends both on what is it now the uh, surface area concentration or more or less let us say I can even call it molar surface area in a way and also the saturation ratio right crystal growth and what happens in agglomeration now due to increase in these uh, what is it now uh, increase in particle size A decreases thus rate also decreases that is what you see in agglomeration right. And obviously, the last aspect was ripening, where we I believe I missed the second aspect, which I am going to discuss now. One aspect is as the uh, size increases, as uh, just what we uh, saw now, I guess, right. So, what do we see now? The size increases, right, uh, the solubility decreases. Right now, in this particular equation and such, what did we see? Uh, when the size is lesser, the uh, solubility is greater, right. So, more or less, that what does that mean now? When the size increases, you know, you have more insoluble uh, uh, forms of the solid, right. So, that is the Oswald ripening. So, the second case is when you have a change in uh, structure or the way, uh, way your particular atoms or molecules are arranged, right. So, in general, here I guess let us say an example will be transformation from amorphous to crystal growth, let us say. So, in general, amorphous is more soluble and crystal growth is uh, less soluble, right. So, obviously, crystal structures relatively more uh, stable than uh, compared to the amorphous uh, what do we say arrangement let us say right. Uh, so, obviously, what does that mean now the less stable one is formed first as in amorphous form is formed first and later given enough time it will transform into the uh, crystal structure right. So, that is the second case of uh, what is it now ripening one is due to the effect of particle size the other is due to the transformation in the uh, arrangement of your particular atoms or uh, molecules here right and let us with that let us move on. So, here one aspect is how can I control the uh, precipitation right how can I uh, control the precipitation now. So, obviously, that is the reason I just listed the various aspects here. So, here we have different aspects let us say we are talking about promoting uh, what do we say precipitation let us say. So, which is the case when you re want to remove heavy metals or such and so on let us say. So, how can you do that now? as we listed it in case of nucleation what can you do you need to increase increase the value of the saturation ratio right. So, you can increase the effect of uh, what is this particular uh, uh, s right saturation ratio increasing that as we see in that nucleation when s is in terms of 100 or 1000 you know that is one particular case or even in your particular crystal growth. Uh, s minus 1 to the power of n. So, increasing saturation ratio is one aspect. So, obviously, another aspect is increase in A right. What is this now uh, uh, surface area concentration right and how can we look at this particular aspect how can we improve this now we can improve that by just increasing the concentration of your solids too will end up increasing the uh, area available per mole let us say <coughs> right or or what else can you do by decreasing the particle size because as you know the smaller the size of the particle you know the greater the uh, area available uh, per unit uh, volume let us say right. So, that is one particular aspect. So, how do you want to uh, you know inhibit or decrease or slow down precipitation now right. So, let us say you have scaling in your evaporative cooling towers or in your uh, uh, the surface or your membranes right or at the membranes and so on. So, how do you do that now again one aspect right how is how can I go about that now I can decrease yes to less than 1 what does this mean. So, I need I can create under saturation conditions right. So, how can I do that now how can I you know make the uh, uh, what is it now uh, or bring down the value of s right. So, for example, keep in mind that let us say uh, for our example let us say you know uh, we had Al 3 plus and OH uh, minus. So, how can you bring down the free metal concentration right. So, you can bring down a free metal concentration by how now adding a complexing agent a ligand right. 
So, if you add a ligand, you know that the free metal concentration is going to be relatively less, right? And then obviously, the saturation ratio is going to be less than or you know decreasing. So, depending upon how much of your complexing agent or ligand you add, the free metal concentration can decrease to less than 1 and that is one particular way. So, we can add uh, what do we say uh, ligands or the relevant ligands anyway, right? Or the complexing agent, right? Complexing agent. And uh, what else now? Uh, so, the second aspect that you can look at is uh, obviously, you need to have uh, or you can create turbulent conditions, right. So, at that particular case, when you create turbulent conditions too, let us say at the surface of your uh, uh, membrane, let us say nanofiltration or ultrafiltration membranes you can create turbulence, right. So, at that case too, you are going to be able to decrease the value of the saturation ratio. So, that is one particular aspect, right and that is with decreasing the uh, saturation or uh, you know creating under saturation conditions to inhibit the precipitation. And one particular case where we look at or you know we just looked at was uh, scaling on the membranes. Obviously, the second aspect is the scale inhibitors I guess, right. as in we can try to limit the two stages. Let us say what is it now? We can try to inhibit nucleation, right? The initial step or trigger that is required or we can inhibit crystal growth, let us say, by adsorbing on the surface or such, right? So, again uh, there are different uh, ways to either promote or uh, what is it now? Inhibit uh, precipitation. So, that is one particular reason why we looked at the four stages to have a better or deeper understanding, right. So, let us uh, move on. So, here now uh, let us say until now we have talked about the relevance of kinetics, right and precipitation and dissolution and we say that at least in precipitation, right the, the relevant uh, reactions are uh, relatively slow. So, in general first the most soluble uh, form of the solid is formed first and then it is usually a very slow process to reach the true equilibrium when the most insoluble form of the solid is formed, right. Again kinetics uh, we looked at the different stages and the relevant role of the kinetics as in the different rates at different stages, right. So, now obviously, let us say if the system reaches equilibrium or even the metastable equilibrium, right, either true equilibrium or the metastable equilibrium as in even when you have one controlling solid, how do I find the relevant concentrations of the uh, relevant uh, what is it now uh, uh, metals or such let us say, right. So, how do I go about that now? So, obviously, you know I think we talked about this solubility constant or which as I call it the solubility product. So, we have this KSO or KSP right depending on uh, depending upon the type of uh, source you look at either KSO or KSP. So, what is it we talk about here? Let us say you know I have a, a solid here ALOH thrice solid. So, it is the solubility product, right. So, it is more or less the dissolution reaction that we always write when we refer to KSO or KSP. So, that is going to be Al 3 plus plus uh, 3 times OH minus. So, obviously, KSP or KSO will be equal to uh, what is it now? Al 3 plus times OH minus to the power of 3 by the activity of Al OH thrice the solid right, but activity of the solid is equal to 1 right. So, that is why we end up with KSP is equal to the activity of the products rise to their stoichiometric coefficients right again you know KSP I guess. So, that is what we have here. So, this is what uh, how would you go about uh, you know uh, understanding or solving for a system at equilibrium, you obviously need to have uh, the knowledge about the relevant uh, solubility constant or the solubility product, right. So, again let us say given a particular system, let us say aluminum or in this case aluminum, uh, let us say can you directly use this particular equation. Uh, for example, let us say assume you have the pH, right. Uh, consider this case where you have the pH of the solution, let us say, right. And let us say you know the K solubility product for this particular equation now. 
so if someone asks you uh, can you solve for Yale 3 plus right uh, the free metal concentration do you think uh, you, you are ready to solve for it not really why is that because from our background we know that the relevant reactions as in acid base maybe not acid base in this case so aluminum will form complexes right so all the complexation reactions are also obviously going to occur simultaneously and they are also going to reach equilibrium within or before uh, the solid is formed right so at this equilibrium or the metastable equilibrium for a particular solid that we are considering not only will you have the precipitation or the relevant dissolution you will certainly have the complexation reactions too so you can't directly just apply okay i know the ph so i know the oh minus i know the ksp and i can calculate al3 plus right that's not how it's going to work why is that because al3 plus is also going to be in equilibrium with not just the solid it's also going to be in equilibrium with the different complexes as in so the al3 plus let's say is not only going to be in equilibrium with your solid but at the same time it's also going to be in equilibrium with your complexes right so obviously you can't just ignore you know one set of your particular uh, what do we say uh, species and just go ahead with the particular uh, uh, solution for the solid right so here i uh, try to understand what we have been doing until now initially we talked about acids and bases which more or less is let's say a foundation for our uh, class other than the fundamentals obviously and then the next logical step was complexes and the next logical step is now uh, solids or precipitation right so again all the three aspects you know occur in uh, conjunction so that's something you need to consider okay so with equilibrium 2 what are the conditions that i need to keep in mind let's say when i solve for uh, uh, precipitation let's say so obviously we are talking about precipitation so what does that mean first aspect is that a solid needs to be present right or should be present or exist in the solution so that's obviously one uh, what do we say uh, uh, underlying phenomena that you need to look for right when you are solving for equilibrium you need to first uh, check whether you have a solid that's precipitated out or not right otherwise it makes uh, no sense so we are going to look at this particular aspect later on again and uh, we'll uh, look at that look at why it's important and obviously just having a solid is not good enough so you should also be the case that the solid is at equilibrium equilibrium either equilibrium or metastable equilibrium right with the aqueous species right so first obviously the one condition is that uh, what is it now the uh, solid should be present and then that the solid should also be at equilibrium with your relevant uh, 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 species that are dissolved in the water right so those these are uh, two aspects that we should certainly uh, consider now right so let's uh, move on i guess so model i guess so in general until now how have we solved for systems at equilibrium now uh, we came up with this uh, conservative quantity what's a conservative quantity right uh, you know uh, that we looked at that's the component so we define components and we solve for the uh, relevant aspects right so in this case too we are going to follow the same approach what is that now the component balance approach right yes uh, but here what's the key i guess uh, similar to when we had the gaseous phase and the liquid phase so earlier if you keep in uh, mind you know we had the aqueous phase and it was you know we uh, solved for cases when it was in equilibrium with the gaseous phase right so we identified some component right x total i think uh, is equal to x total in the aqueous phase plus x total in the gaseous phase right so similarly here too we are going to have uh, a case where aqueous phase and the solid phase they are at equilibrium right so the x total is now going to be x total in the aqueous phase plus x total in the solid phase right uh, so we are going to take this further uh, but i guess it needs uh, some more time uh, which we uh, are short of right now so uh, we are going to go through with uh, you know understanding how to solve for your particular system first by hand you know first you are going to understand the basics right and then obviously we are going to uh, look at the applications uh, with respect to women tech right and so i guess with uh, that i will be done for today's session and thank you